What's up everyone? In this video, we're going to explain what the heck is going on with DraftKings stock, why the stock is plummeting, and what happened on their most recent earnings report. So before we dive deep into the most recent earnings report, I want to take a look at just how their revenue has been growing over the past couple of years and the past couple of quarters. We'll start off with their yearly data. In 2019, their annual revenue was $323 million. In 2020, their annual revenue was $615 million. In 2021, their annual revenue was just under $1.3 billion. That is a giant increase, especially for a company as big as DraftKings is. And they're not even that big yet. Like, it's one thing if you have a company that takes their annual revenue from $1 million to $2 million. But it's another thing when you have a company take their annual revenue from $615 million up to just under $1.3 billion in one year. So even if we scroll down to the quarterly data, over the most recent quarter, DraftKings revenue was $473 million. The quarter before that, the revenue was $213 million. And then even if you want to just compare this Q4 to the previous Q4, um, the Q4 of 2021 had $473 million in revenue. Q4 of 2020 had $322 million in revenue. So no matter which way you look at it, whether it's you know quarterly, annual, like no matter which way you look at the revenue, they are exploding. So that's awesome to see. So you're probably wondering, all right, well, if their revenue is exploding, why is the stock getting destroyed? It's down 19% today. Basically, everyone is freaking out because of the EBITDA loss that they um, gave out, you can say. So we can see DraftKings is expecting an EBITDA loss for 2022 between $825 million and $925 million. And the market was only expecting a loss of around $573 million. Everyone is freaking out about this. Like, like growth companies don't make money in the beginning stages. That's just how business works. If we look at a lot of people's favorite stock over the past two or three years, good old Tesla, Tesla did not make money in the beginning. That's just how business works. Like you, in, you, you take a loss a lot of times in the beginning stages and you have the hope that you make a ton of money in the future. We can see Tesla's first profitable year was in 2020. And before 2020, no one cared about Tesla, at least in the market. You know, if we look actually back at Tesla's chart, it was all over the place in 2018, 2019, and everything before that. So if we went to like a five-year chart, Tesla, you know, everyone loves Tesla now that it's consistently profitable. But before that, no one cared. The stock was all over the place. So it's like, that's just how the market is. And in my opinion, that's very irrational. You know, the market will just look over any companies that aren't consistently profitable. But then once they are consistently profitable, they'll just like love them. It's like it's like a, it's like a like a light switch. It's like either on or off and like the market just I feel like it needs to just like see through that a little bit. Like you have to like take the growth into account and the future profitability into account. And I feel like the market is just completely overlooking that on DraftKings and honestly a lot of other stocks, but that's a, a point for another video. But anyways, um back to their recent earnings report. Um, like I said, the EBITDA loss was a major concern for Wall Street. Uh, the revenue was expected to come in at $445 million for the most recent quarter, and it came in at $473 million. Um, another thing is the sports betting industry is exploding. Oh, and then another thing too is uh, DraftKings initially expected, so let me just go back to this chart really quickly. Let me pull up the DraftKings annual revenue just to put something into perspective really quickly. So for 2021, DraftKings annual revenue was just under $1.3 billion. Initially, they were expecting their 2022 revenue to be between a, uh, between $1.7 billion and $1.9 billion. But actually, they're, they're growing so much that they now expect it to be between $1.85 billion and $2 billion. So they're given great guidance in that sense, but everyone's freaking out about the expected EBITDA loss. So like to me, I'm like, all right, everyone's freaking out about this now, but 
what's going to happen in, let's say, two, three, five, maybe 10 years from now, where DraftKings doesn't have to spend nowhere near the amount of money they're spending now on acquiring new customers, and then they have a lot more monthly active users. Like, is Wall Street just all of a sudden going to love DraftKings then? Like, I feel like the market and just... I guess, yeah, I guess you could say the market is just really mispricing the opportunity and the growth rates with DraftKings right now. Because it's like, it's not like we're out here saying, oh, I really hope DraftKings grows their revenue one day. It's like, they already are. Like, what other sign do you need? Like, their revenue has been exploding year after year after year. The industry that they're in is exploding, and it's extremely lucrative. They actually said that they're going to grow faster than they originally expected. Um, and then their quarterly revenue is exploding too. So it's like, what else do you need in terms of growth rates? Like, people who are investing into any growth stocks, whether it's DraftKings or anything, any growth stock, you're not investing into that for consistent cash flows right now. You're not investing into DraftKings for safety. You're not investing into it like you would invest into Coca-Cola. Like Coca-Cola, it's a safe, slow and steady stock. It's probably not gonna go anywhere over the next five years. DraftKings, it's volatile and it has a lot of growth potential, but there's also some increased risk with that. And I just feel like the market is just totally overlooking the growth that DraftKings is having and it's just focusing way too much on, on the um, expected loss. But whatever, T time will tell and uh, we'll see how this one performs over the next couple of years. But either way, their earnings were pretty decent in my opinion. Of course, the expected loss was not a good sign. But besides that, they are growing and when you're, when you're investing into a growth company, that's what you want to see. So I thought they were pretty decent. Uh, their CEO said that it's a wild market right now. I think what we're doing has been very consistent since day one. I think the model's working and we'll play the long game here. He also said he feels very confident that the, that once the market settles down and rationality kicks back in, that the metrics we're putting out there will start to resonate. But in the meantime, we just gotta keep doing our thing and hopefully the market will catch on. And I feel the same way, you know, like the market is irrational sometimes, as we all know. And over the long time, over the long term, um, I think the valuation will, uh, I, th I think the market will wake up soon enough. But uh, if we dive a little deeper into their most recent earnings report, uh, we could see the headline on the DraftKings Investor Relations tab says, better than expected earnings results with 47% year over year revenue increase in Q4 of 2021. Um, and we, yeah, we covered this already. So if we look at their Q4 revenue, it came in at $473 million. In the same quarter last year, it was only at $322 million. So it's like, that is a giant increase. So if we dive a little bit deeper, uh, like I said, they are raising their revenue guidance, which is awesome. They're, they're improving a lot, you know, and each state that they have, they have a, a two to three year path to profitability. In the beginning stages, it takes a lot to, you know, launch into a state like New York. There's a lot that goes into it, uh, especially with acquiring new customers, promotions, licensing, everything like that. There's a lot that goes into it. And that's why they have the increased costs right now. But once, let's say like two, three, maybe five years down the line, the costs should drop a lot and the revenue should continue to explode. And that'll just make it that much easier to be profitable. So that's awesome to see. Uh, also, if we looked at their um, earnings presentation, like we said, their revenue has been growing, lots of great things in that sense. Another thing to look at is their monthly unique players. We could see that in 2020, their monthly unique players were 883,000. And in 2021, their monthly unique players was just under 1.5 million. Awesome to see. Uh, we can also see that the average revenue per monthly unique player uh, went from $51 in 2020 up to $67 in 2021. So it's like, whichever way you look at it, they're growing. It's just Wall Street and the overall market is just freaking out because of the expected loss for 2022. But it's like, they're a growth company. They are in one of the most lucrative industries that there is. They're in an industry that's exploding and they're one of the leaders within that industry. So it's like, to me, I feel like this sell-off 
is wildly overblown. In the meantime, I'm gonna continue to buy the dip. It's one of my favorite stocks to own for the long term. And I am confident with the data that we have that DraftKings will be worth a lot more in the future than it is right now. So while the market's stupid, uh, stupid moves are very irritating, I'm very confident that this stock will, and this that this stock and this company will continue to grow a lot over the years. But in the short term, of course, there's going to be that volatility. And as I've been saying for a while, DraftKings is a volatile stock. So if you're in it, be prepared for that volatility. In the same way that it falls a ton to the downside, it can rise a ton to the upside. So besides that, you know, some of my closing thoughts are like. This is a growth company and the market loves to treat growth companies in a really tough way before they start to consistently produce profits in the same way that it did to Tesla. You know, no one no one cared about Tesla in, you know, 2018, 2017 and like of course people cared about it, but the market didn't give it nowhere near the amount of respect that it gives it today. But then, you know, like a light switch from I guess you could say yeah, I guess you could say from 2020, everyone just loved Tesla and it became one of the uh, the best um, best stocks in the market over the year. So whatever, the market's weird sometimes. The numbers don't lie with DraftKings. When you see the revenue growth that they have, um, it's just a matter of time before the stock price explodes. And I know everyone's ex- freaking out about the losses right now, but they're in one of the most lucrative industries that there is. And then on top of that, they're spending their money to acquire customers right now and build their brand. Like it's not like, like, like the, the money that they're spending right now for the most part, it's just growing their company even more. So it's just like, it, it's irritating with how the market reacts sometimes. But like I said, they're in an explosive industry and I'm very excited for their future. Uh, I'm going to continue buying the debt. But besides that guys, uh, if you enjoyed today's video, please leave a comment down below. Don't forget that the market will be closed on Monday. And let me know what you guys think about DraftKings right now. I know the stock has been brutal over the past couple of years, but at this level, I love the opportunity and I'm very excited to see how this stock performs over the next couple of years. Besides that, thank you guys so much for watching.